Hi guys, and welcome back to Tech Corner. My name's Jay Picasso, and today we're gonna to be discussing studio etiquette. How to essentially conduct yourself when approaching studio sessions, or spending time in a studio. So the number one thing to consider here, being in a studio, are the basics. No food, no phones, and don't touch anything without permission. It's kind of simple really. In terms of the first two subjects, no food and no phones, that is subject to the studio owner and the particular studio that you happen to be visiting that day. But I will tell you as a rule in principle, nobody likes the idea of spilling drink or having to clean your bits of food out of their carpet, out of their studio floor or out of their equipment. So keep that in mind. If you are gonna be eating or drinking in the studio, just make sure that you do it with the permission of the person that owns the place and therefore you shouldn't have any problems. Also, just be mindful. Some studios come well prepared with a kitchen area, somewhere to eat, potentially even plates, knives and forks, so on and so forth, but not all do. So just be aware of your surroundings and make sure that you're making the right decision in terms of eating and drinking around someone's expensive equipment. To say no phones is actually contradictory nowadays because phones often capture some of the magic that happens in the studio, but generally what that means is don't let your phone become a distraction to anyone else in the studio. It's okay if you're using it yourself, but try not to let it become something that can easily distract other people or take them out of their work. So there is a principle as well with electronic interference that if you're going to be in a vocal booth, try to have your phone on silent, but more importantly, try to have it in airplane mode so there can be no interference. In terms of touching equipment, this is kind of like just being in someone's house. You don't just walk around someone's house touching stuff. Of course, in a studio, you're going to be inquisitive. There's nothing wrong with that, but just make sure that you have the permission of the person that really operates the gear before you go touching it. There can be nothing worse than someone messing with the setting that you've got set up for a particular recording before the recording has even taken place. It can cost you time and it can cost you a lot of energy to get it back. So be conscious of that. And like I said, it's like being in someone's house. You wouldn't necessarily walk around someone's house just touching stuff, particularly stuff that you have been invited to touch so just be conscious of it be aware of it there is an etiquette to gear unless you are a studio engineer yourself the likelihood is that the engineer won't want you tampering with stuff that you don't understand so while some of these faders sliders and knobs can look awesome and flashy make sure that you've at least sought the engineer's permission before you go touching or editing that fader or button number two be respectful. The number one thing to consider here is that this studio that you're in is often someone else's absolute pride and joy. So although you might be there for the afternoon, for the day, just make sure that you're respectful of the space. It's also something that can be really reciprocated. Engineers, producers, people that work in the studio will really reciprocate that kind of respect to someone that clearly has a good efficacy for being inside a studio building. So just to show that level of respect for the people that you're around and for the building itself is vitally important. So the next point, Vibe. Vibe is vital. What surrounds this is the idea of keeping it cool but professional. When you consider vibe in a studio, it's really important to consider what you're contributing to the record and what you're contributing to the day overall. So the vibe that you carry and the vibe that you give off is massively important. Let's also remember that there is a recording going on and that there will be work being done so that your vibe is a part of that energy which sustains the session and projects the session into a better place. So make sure that you are there and that you are on the vibe you are on the energy, the wavelength of the session, of the engineer. Sometimes that can mean having a simple conversation with people that you don't know prior to the session, during the session. It's just more personal. It just adds so much more depth to a session's characteristics. So to spend time just creating a vibe, setting a vibe, continuing a vibe is really, really important to studio sessions. Also, vibe is like this elusive thing that people gravitate towards. So if you are someone that brings a vibe, has a vibe the likelihood is that people will be warm towards it people will want it around and when it comes to future sessions they'll want that same vibe back so if you bring that vibe and you bring that with an authenticity and a genuineness about it then be sure to be invited to studio sessions continuously because what's needed in the studios and what's needed to make records happen is just that vibe so vibe is vital. Next on this hit list is who's in the room. Just like vibe and energy is important, who's in the room, everybody in that room contributes something towards the energy of the record. Now, it's all well and good for you to show up with your friends, your mates, but bear in mind, whilst it can be social to be in a studio, this is still work and we still wanna be productive. So anyone that surrounds you in a studio session should have a purpose. It's okay to have one or two hype people, even people that just give the odd head nod, or people that are even there physically contributing to the movement of the track and just giving you a sense 
of energy and a sense of pace. That's really good. But when you have individuals in a room that have absolutely no function, perhaps aren't even interested in the record, and sometimes even contribute towards distractions uh, of that studio session, then those people are no good and you wanna consider not necessarily having them around. You wouldn't take everybody to the gym with you, so you shouldn't be taking everybody or anybody to the studio with you. When in a studio, you wanna be as productive as possible. So anyone around you should be contributing towards that productivity and bringing out the best in you and your studio day. Anything less, you wanna get rid of. And lastly, Ego is killer. Ego is the first thing to ruin studio sessions. Ego is the first thing to kill off relationships in this music industry. So just be aware of your ego levels. There's nothing wrong with being confident in a studio session. And in fact, everybody wants you to be confident as you enter the studio. Don't come here if you're not a professional. It's that simple. So we need a certain level of confidence. Having said that, you don't want to bring your ego. You want to check your ego in at the door. What that means is still being a person, still being relatable. I can't come in acting too precious. I can't come in acting like the superstar, like you work for me, I need to be working with you. And in fact, when it comes to working in a studio, everybody in that room is working collaboratively towards one and the same goal. So it becomes super important for you to let go of your ego, drop some of the pretense, and just make sure that you are there as someone who can be worked with, someone who enjoys working with other people, and someone that is inclusive of everybody in the team. So the last thing I'd say is if you don't know, ask. Too many times there are people in a studio who are forming this for pretense of they live here or they're used to it or I've done this a thousand times perhaps you have but if you don't know the answer to something perhaps you don't know what the engineer is doing with your vocals or you don't know what the musicians up to then just ask there's plenty of instances where these are opportunities to learn so if you see the engineer fiddling with a knob that you have no idea what it does but you're interested just ask away there are several sessions where I couldn't be happier to tell people what I'm up to it makes sense of it if I sat with my mechanic as he did everything and he told me what he did I probably leave with a greater understanding of how my car actually works. So in this instance, when it comes to your music, don't be afraid to ask. Don't come in with such a big ego that you can't even ask simple questions about the production process behind your own music. So be open to learning new things whilst you're there as well. And that's also new ways of recording, new techniques and new equipment. So hopefully this has been helpful. Just remember when it comes to working in a studio, everybody there should be there to achieve the same goal. So everybody wants to get along, everybody wants to buy it and nobody wants to have to deal with ego. So hopefully that's been helpful. Thanks for tuning in today guys. I'm Jay Picasso and I'll catch you next time. Peace.